What's up guys, this is Aaron from Gear Up and welcome to part 3 of my detailing mini series. Yes, the puns never stop with this thing. We're gonna clean the interior today. We've done the outside, talked about scratches and trim and how to get rid of the scratches. And if you haven't watched those episodes before this, but we're gonna focus on the place you spend the most time in, your interior. And you've probably done cleaning of your own in that, thrown away trash, vacuum, dusted. But I'm gonna present some tips today, that quick ones, cheap ones, free ones, that probably will help you do it fast and do it really nice. So if you're interested, stay tuned. We're gonna talk about it. I have the lighting all set up, cameras set up, so we're ready to roll. And stay tuned. But before we do, we're gonna hit the intro. <laughs> So guys, are you ready to begin? Let's jump straight into vacuuming the cabin. Now, if your interior has trash though, go over the entire car and toss those things out first. I skipped this step because I have none in the car because I'm OCD like that. And when I mean the entire car, by the way, I mean check everywhere. Under the floor mats, under and under the seats, in your glove box, anything, seat cushions, the door rails if you have a minivan. Be sure to have a strong vacuum for the job when you're vacuuming. Here I have a shark rocket with its detachable hand unit and it's not as strong as a dedicated floor HEPA unit but it gets the job done with way more passes. So really up to you. If you noticed, I'm also cleaning the rubber molding here. Dirt and sand and such get in there so pr to prolong the life of the rubber I suggest making it a point to clean the molding two or three times a year. You don't have to do it every time. Here, I spent some time on the parcel shelf. There was a lot of dog hair in this one from the previous owner, so I had to make sure to get those off. They stuck on really good. Then I dropped the seats and vacuum in the dark and dirty world of nooks and crannies. It's easy to clean under sliding seats too, such as front and second row captain's chairs if you have those. Hey there, there's that electrical tape I've been looking for. See, it pays to check, guys. I would dare say that floor mats are some of the most aesthetically important parts of your car because they are so highly trafficked, they're probably looking dark and muddy after a month or two of rainy season or snow. So if yours need it, take them out and dust or wash them and you'll be surprised what a difference it makes in your cabin. It will look so much cleaner when you open the door and step in. If you have rubber mats, kudos to you because they're so much easier to deal with. And all you have to do here is vacuum around and under them, so easy peasy stuff. Don't forget to vacuum in the seams of your seats as well. Like rubber molding, sand and dirt that are stuck in there can wear down the stitching eventually. Also, don't forget to vacuum behind and under the seats, paying some attention to the seat rails. Remove anything that can jam up the rails such as buttons, cereal, beads and so on. I think it goes without saying that if you have kids or just like to throw junk at the back, you have a lot of vacuuming to do in there. So good luck with that. You might have to clear out your vacuum's dust canister a couple of times and possibly declog the filter. That's, that's just sad. A great place to find things to suck is if you check under the seat belt buckles. Stuff tends to fall in there and never be found. Until now. Alright, now we've come to the exciting part and let's begin with the seats. You can use any decent leather product out there for the task. And I have in a couple of examples. Here we have a leather cleaner that's a little bit more expensive. And then we have a conditioner that follows that up. It's also a little bit expensive combined. But as an alternative, you can get just a generic 3-in-1 protector. It does the cleaning, conditioning, and protecting all at the same time. And this is all you need, to be honest. The leatherette on this seat looks rather dry in this case. So we'll soon find out how much love or not it was shown over its lifetime so far. Because usually, when you see dry leather, it means no protectant. And no protectant means not cleaned. Like ever. So here I've already sprayed a little cleaner and I'm buffing it with a microfiber towel and oh my, see I was right, check out the dirt collected on the first pass. Ugh. Since this is the base part of the cleaning process, make sure you get this right because once you put layers on top of it, you trap the dirt under it. So clean it until you're happy and then move on to the next part of the process. Which means in our case applying conditioner followed by UV protectant. Just follow the same steps of spraying and then buffing. Now, in tight spots and to reduce overspraying, spray the liquid into a towel and then buff. That's my suggestion. Okay, got it? I'd like to point out three areas that are usually neglected in the cleaning protecting stage, which are the side of the seat bolsters, check under the plastics, okay? The crevice between the seat back and the seat bottom, 
and you'll need to recline the seat all the way to have access, and the front of the seat bottoms. All these spots can get pretty nasty over time, so don't forget to show these guys some love. And since you're down here, I'll suggest applying some rubber protectant into the molding that surrounds the door aperture. If you want, like I do, go ahead and do the same for the footwell plastics that surround your pedals. Feel free to reach into your foot air vent and clean any dust off as well. If there's another place that the regular car owner forgets to clean, it is the door jam. Here, leaves, greasy gunk, dust, and mud can collect over time and affect the lubricity of the door hinges and door checks. You know, those little things which allow you to stop your door in various widths. So just spray some detailing spray when you're cleaning this part. And use a paper towel if you find heavy grease around the hinges only. Don't touch the grease on the hinges. The door card is pretty straightforward. I find it best to work in this particular order. First, use a little rubber protectant on the rough plastics. Then, letter products on leather or pleather surfaces. And then, detailing spray on smooth plastics or metal bits. And finally, glass cleaner on the glass. Now, two things to be mindful of when working with door cards. Pay attention to where your arm and hands usually rest or land, and then clean those areas really well. I can guarantee your cloth will be pretty dark after this. Secondly, clean the top edge of your door glass by dropping the glass a little bit. The outside and underside edges of the door gather a lot of dirt too, so spend some time wiping around these parts. And the same can be said for the door pillars too. Here's a quick cleaning tip. As you're cleaning or dusting your car, you probably come across grooves that look almost impossible to clean like this one. What I do here is grab a towel and a flathead screwdriver, then I glide the tool and cloth to the groove and voila! Alright, we're done with the doors, on to the steering wheel. The rules here are similar to the door cards. Use the proper products for the right surfaces, while paying attention to high usage areas such as the signal and wiper stocks, steering wheel buttons, the stitching, and such. The best technique I found for cleaning the rim is using a twisting method like so. It looks dirty. Yes, in all sense of the word. Now, we've all cleaned our steering wheel at some point, but have you paid much attention to the back of the rim? Look at mine. And yeah, sure, some of it are fingernail scratches, so that will never buff out. But there's plenty of grime back there. That's germ prime estate, guys. And here is what it looks like after I was done cleaning it. Check it out, man. Quite a difference, right? As we look to tackle the dashboard next, I need to state an important ethic to follow when it comes to applying protectant on pretty much any surface. I'm sorry I didn't mention this earlier. Yes, it is very tempting to want to make every surface shiny and bright and have that wet look, but I say don't fall for that. It's a safety issue when you're driving along, for example, and you're blinded by the sun reflecting off of your overly shiny dashboard and you kill this squirrel riding innocently on a bicycle, or the time when you're making an emergency maneuver and your hands slip from the steering wheel and you kill the squirrel on a bicycle. You get the picture? Anyway, the dashboard can crack because as it ages, the sun dehydrates the plastic, rubber, or leather, whatever it's made of. You can use protectant maybe two to three times a year, I would recommend, to counteract that. Again, use moderately and then follow that by cleaning the windshield glass. AC vents are up next and we all know the inner part of the vents can be a bugger to clean. We either leave them be or suffer with a Q-tip, but I found a cool gadget that seems to help. I got this on Amazon, it's called the Dust Daddy. It has a creepy name but works totally cool when attached to your vacuum. Those little tubes can get into the deep recesses of the vent and suck dust and dirt up. It's actually pretty effective. I've also found it really useful cleaning cup holders, coin storage, and even around a house for cleaning silverware trays and kitchen drawers, among other things. The cool part is that you can leave all your stuff in there because the small tubes suck up hair, crumbs, and dust only. I think I'll speed through cleaning the shifter section. You know the basics by now and I know that I'll just be drawn into making really bad puns here like you should really give your knob a nice spit and shine or your hands are on your knob all the time so be sure to clean it often and rub some protectant in real good or okay I think I'll stop here. Next. Likewise, the parking brake, in case you still have one of those, and the center armrests are necessary places to thoroughly clean. 
And don't forget to clear any trash if you haven't already in any of the storage cubbies. And then we come to the center dash controls. We have our grimy sticky fingers here at all times, so do not skip this part. If you look closely, you see that the previous owner of this car didn't clean the AC control dial at all, so I had to take some lot of time actually rubbing the black grime off of it. It looks amazing now though. You know what they say? Always remember to look up. And so while you clean your car, don't forget the roof area, such as the vanity mirrors and the rear view mirror. If your room liner is stained, clean it like you would with cloth seats, the way we talked about earlier. Last but not least, you need to clean your seat belts once every 2-3 to three years, depending on usage and environment. Dirty seat belts can interfere with the retracting mechanism, so it can prove to be a safety concern. So get it done if you haven't already. It's pretty easy to clean, just use some warm, mildly soapy water and rub the belts clean with a good towel, and take care not to oversaturate the belt. When you're done, run a dry clean towel to dry it. And that's it, you're done. Whew, I'm done for today. I'm done cleaning, I'm done shooting, now I'm gonna edit this. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope you learned something and if you have a comment or question, comment down below. I love to have you guys back. So click subscribe because if you click subscribe and you turn on the notification bell below, so whenever I publish a new video, you get a no notification that I've got something out. So please do that. And ch I'm trying to reach a number of 500. Let's throw out there 500. Help me to get there, guys. It really helps my channel if you more subscribers come on board. And it really helps me produce more quality videos for you guys. So thanks for that. Thumbs up if you like it and thumbs down. Hmm. Hmm. Thumbs down. Some of you see drivers around town with stuff, junk all over their, in their car, right? Like bottles and trash and burger wrappers front, on their front seats and back seats. You've seen those people. Thumbs down to you if you look down on those folks. Those are, they're collectors. Just like you collect stuff and put them in your garage, like you collect baseball cards and signed autographed t-shirts and stuff. Those guys are probably collectors too. They collect bottles and trash and cockroaches, flies, maggots. That's what they like to do, so cut them a break. Be nice. Anyways, that's all I got. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you're having a great day so far and coming back. Uh, have a great one. Peace out and go help someone, please. Show some love to the world. We, know, we all need it for all we know. And take care of you guys. Peace out. Until next time.